You know, when I started my company here about 10 years ago, you know, a few miles away, now, I had to do a lot. You know, of course, I wanted to build this simple CRM application, right? I'm sure you all know the story. So we kind of wanted to deliver CRM as a service. It wasn't such a complicated idea. You know, accounts, contacts, opportunities, forecast reports, build these different tabs. But to build that application, we had to do a lot. We, first of all, had to set up a whole hardware infrastructure. A network, a storage, an operating system, a database, an app server, a web server, a data center, all of the disaster recovery that enterprises expect. I mean, if we were going to run it for Citibank, if we were going to run it for Merrill Lynch, if we were going to run it for Cisco, it was going to have to be mirrored and replicated and SAS 70 Type 2 and all those ISO standards. I mean, that was a lot to get going on the hardware infrastructure. And then once we had that in place, we had to deliver our software infrastructure and all the security and the sharing, the integration and the customization models and the APIs and the workflow and the multi-device capability and so forth. And then once we did that, we had to go into our technical operations to be able to run it every day, right? I mean, because our customers would expect us to be the operators of it and the backup and the recovery, you know, and then, and, and then into the business operations to be able to do all the billing and so forth. And then finally, after these four major areas, we could finally write our little application that we wanted to write. But that was a lot of work to finally get to the end. So, you know, that's not so different than in the world of software today where, you know, you want to build a .NET application and you have to kind of set up your data center and your network and your production facilities and your CRM servers and your SQL servers and your exchange servers and your Active Directory servers and your visual services and reporting and routers and on and on and on. And, and then the power is once you get all that built, what do you need to do? Well, how do you get to market? How do you distribute it? How do you get it all over the world? You know, it's one thing if you're here in Silicon Valley. What if you're in India? What if you're in China? What if you're in Eastern Europe? And then, what is your reward if you actually get all those implementations out there? Well, it's all the upgrades and the updates and, you know, I mean, we've all been through this path before, haven't we? You know what I mean? I mean, once you, if you're really successful, it just becomes even a more of a burden. And all of the maintenance and then hiring people to maintain the old versions while you're working on the current versions. I mean, I knew I had enough of this ten years ago. Because I saw way too many software projects fail. Which is why, I, why we started Salesforce, to kind of show that it was, you know, a choice that we could all make. We could all make the choice between software and cloud computing. Because the cloud empowered every developer. Everyone here who's able to just plug in or connect to the wireless or be a wireline can connect to our data centers and connect to the services on the network. That's pretty powerful. But if you can connect from here, you can also connect from Asia, from Europe, from India as well. So the cloud is really empowering every developer. And you can plug into a utility service and its infrastructure, you know, for everyone and for every idea. And the cloud is empowering every developer globally. So as we move around the world, we're able to see all these folks who before were not able to participate in our industry or our environment or our ecosystem are getting lit up and with the best stuff possible. That is really amazing. And once you build it, you know, if you're in Eastern Europe and you build it, you can deploy here in Silicon Valley. If you're in India, you can deploy in Japan. You know, it's, the, it's this kind of transparent deployment model that's so powerful. This is another huge catalyst of why this is happening. So cloud computing offers a very different choice. We're leveraging the infrastructure of the internet to run your apps at a much lower cost, much simpler, much easier to use. And with this development and deployment model that's so different than what we've had to kind of go through before. I mean, certainly software as a service, well, that was extremely exciting. But platform as a service, you know, and, and so many are happening. I mean, we actually had to edit this slide down on Friday because there have been so many that have emerged since we started our pro tour, even our tour de force. You know, and whether it's force.com or Amazon or Facebook or Google or any of the other major platforms that are happening or startups that are happening, you know, this is, this is a powerful time for our industry. Now, one of the key things about the platform is we really see them all kind of heading in slightly different directions. 
So Amazon is maybe heading a little bit more towards CPU and storage, and of course Facebook is more heading towards the social applications, and, and Google has you know, a real focus on web applications, and initially on Python, and, and looking forward to doing other things, and we're really focused on the enterprise. We're really focused on how do we build an enterprise quality platform for the most important companies in the world, from startups to mid-sized companies to the largest companies. And this has really been our focus, not the consumer side, but really the enterprise side of the, the equation. 